Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to another Monday Night Raw. Cameras are starting out here backstage catching Sheamus. Having a little uh, interaction with the general manager, Chris Jericho. Gotta wonder what this is about. Last week, the bar lost their titles to the family, but uh, gotta believe they're going to invoke that rematch clause. But in other news, we do have a new number one contender tournament for the women's championship beginning tonight. Uh, in our first match, actually, you will see Carmella take on Becky Lynch. Also later tonight, we'll see Nikki Bella and Ruby Riot. And then, of course, the other matches will take place next week on Raw. So let's kick things off here with the princess of Staten Island, the princess of the family, Carmella. And Carmella in recent weeks has been uh, quite impressive since joining the family, or really since making her return here to Raw. She came back a few weeks ago impromptu and uh, had a match against Becky Lynch. She was filling in for Natalia, who was injured. Carmella was able to uh, best Becky on that night. So tonight, coincidentally, they're, they're paired up in this uh, number one contenders tournament because we do need a new number one contender for the Raw Women's Championship. Asuka has been uh, put on the shelf, I guess, for lack of a better word. She's not, she's not on the DL or anything, you know. She's just, uh, she just needs a few weeks off to recuperate from the, from the beating that Team Rude just has, has been putting on her for the last month or so. But eventually... Uh, we will have a winner come out of this tournament, and we will have a new number one contender who will be facing the Raw Women's Champion Alexa Bliss at Elimination Chamber. And what's this? Looks like Carmella is not waiting for things to start. She just grabbed a sledgehammer. Oh my God! What is Carmella's beef with Becky Lynch? Goodness, there's no reason for this. I mean, we know. Oh, on the steel. I mean, obviously, uh, Carmella wants to win this tournament. Becky Lynch wants to win this tournament. You know, they all want to be women's champion, obviously, but this there, there's no reason to grab a sledgehammer and attack your opponent before the match. That's just... That's completely uncalled for. Classless move on Carmella's part, I gotta say. But you gotta think. I mean, it does give her the advantage, obviously. Uh, the match hasn't even started yet. I and, mean, of course, Becky... Her, her ribs got to be hurting already. Her stomach's got to be at least bruised from that sledgehammer shot. Carmella is able to follow up there with a Luthez press. And the princess is fired up. Fans are not liking this at all. And the family has been on a roll here in the WWE on Monday Night Raw the last few weeks. Again, last week we saw Matt Morgan and Rusev pick up the uh, dominating victory over the bar. And I, I still, a week later, I'm left speechless at that match. Just the, uh, how easy it was for the family, really. I mean, Sheamus and Cesaro, they're two of the best competitors. They were the best tag team that we had here on Raw, obviously. And Rusev and uh, Matt Morgan were able to come in here and make them look like amateurs. It was ridiculous. Carmella's really, uh, again, she's making Becky look like an amateur here. She's fired up. Taking it to the house. With a move like that, Throws Becky into that barricade. Hits her with a big forearm shot. Becky's got to get going here. Again, we it's a tournament. There's a lot on the line here. Number one contendership for the Raw Women's Championship. You get to meet Alexa Bliss. Fight for that title at Elimination Chamber. Becky's got to step it up. Carmella's going all the way to the top. Is she going to Is she going to jump? I don't think so. Oh my god, she did! Oh, a big elbow drop! Huge elbow delivered to the face of Becky to the outside. And I don't think Becky's ever really covered from that sledgehammer shot, honestly. I mean, she's not grabbing her ribs or anything, but she she's not able to mount any offense here against Carmella. And a, and a win here tonight, I mean, obviously it advances Carmella in the tournament, but... It just keeps the momentum going for the family, really. And I gotta wonder what that uh, what that little backstage meeting was with Sheamus and and Chris Jericho there. I I would have to assume. What is this? Carmella with a big float over. Oh, into a reverse DDT, going for the cover. One, two, and Becky kicked out. Heck of a move there by Carmella. 
Becky was able to kick out of that. I, I would have to think that uh, Sheamus was probably just invoking his rematch clause. I'm not sure. Becky, Becky's in trouble. Ooh, Carmella got a, a two count there. Becky's hurt. She's out of it here. She's got to get going. Carmella now looking for an advantage using the ropes. One, two, and Becky. Oh! The referee caught it in time. My goodness. Carmella's pulling out all the stops here. She wants that win at any cost. That's for sure. But again, I, you got to think Sheamus was probably just letting Jericho know he wants, you know, the bar wants the rematch here tonight, and rightfully so, because, I mean, they just they didn't really look prepared last week, and that's hard to hard to grasp. But they they knew who their opponents were going to be. I mean, they knew they were going to have a match. They they should have been ready for it, but I, I don't know. They just it looks like the family kind of just caught them off guard. Really, just I've never seen. The bar dominated like that. Kind of like I've, I've never seen Becky Lynch dominate him like this, the way Carmella's doing. Again, you, you got to wonder. I really don't think that uh, Carmella has any specific personal beef against Becky. It's just coincidental that that's who she made her return against, and now they're they're paired up in this tournament. She delivered a big super kick there to Becky. She's Becky's she's in trouble here. She's just being drug around the ring. Carmella setting her up. Becky's not moving too much. Here, here she goes. She's getting up now. She's got to make a comeback here. Carmella. Oh, oh, Carmella hits the code of silence. The code of silence. Becky's not near the ropes. This might be it. Becky may have to tap here, and she does. Carmella picks up a huge upset victory. Another win over Becky Lynch. Unbelievable. Carmella has this girl's number. Big super kick on the outside. Sometimes that just happens. Sometimes for whatever reason, you struggle to beat this one person. I don't know, but I mean, of course, when they start out the match smashing you in the abdomen with a sledgehammer, it kind of makes things a little more difficult, obviously. But uh, that's what the family does, man. That's Carmella impressive. Picks up a tap-out victory over... Becky Lynch. Let's take a look at the updated bracket now. You see Carmella moves on to the second round. She'll be taking on either Ember Moon or Natalia. That match will go down next week. Right now, we're going to take a quick break. Be sure to come right back. And welcome back to Monday Night Raw, ladies and gentlemen. As we see Roman Reigns making his way down to the ring here. This is the... Uh, First time we've seen Roman Reigns since the Rumble last week when he was eliminated by Lars Sullivan. Lars Sullivan able to eliminate the big dog, among others, but uh, let's see what Roman has to say here. Basically just getting the crowd pumped up, letting them know it's still his yard. Even though he didn't win the Rumble, he still, uh, still considers himself to be the man to beat here on Monday Night Raw. And the Shield, we haven't seen much of them, again, since the Rumble. Uh, none of the three of them, obviously, able to pick up the victory. And Looks like Roman's saying there's somebody in the WWE that's come along that he's earned his respect. He comes out here every night and puts his heart and soul into what he does. And apparently he impresses Roman Reigns, so... Somebody in the back has, uh, has apparently caught Roman's eye. See what's uh, what point he's trying to make here. Lars Sullivan. That's kind of what I was thinking. And again, I can't blame Roman Reigns. I mean, Lars Sullivan. What a what an impressive showing in last night or in last week's Rumble. He was able to eliminate Roman Reigns, Bobby Roode. He eliminated Kevin Owens within a minute of his arrival. And this guy. This guy is for real. Look at the size of this monster. They call him the freak, and I can see why. He's just a a genetic specimen specimen to behold, that's for sure. Definitely not someone you'd want to run into in a dark alley, that's for sure. But it looks like Roman called him out here tonight in a friendly gesture. Lars Sullivan actually is on the side of the, uh, the Gentleman's Club with Aiden English and Jack Gallagher, who... 
are not very well liked by other WWE superstars, but uh, Roman Reigns seems to have taken a liking to Lars here and called him out here. Let's see what uh, what Lars has to say. And Lars is not impressed with Roman Reigns placating to him. Lars is not here for friendships. He's not here for partnerships. He's not here to impress people or get people's blessings. He's here to prove himself. He's here to win. Bad doesn't even begin to describe the oh, and Roman. Like I said, Roman started out friendly, but he's... Uh, Lars wasn't having it. So this... I mean, can you imagine, though? This could get... This could get ugly. I'd be interested in seeing this match, that's for sure. The big dog against the freak, that would be a fun match. Oh, looks like these guys are just trading insults now. This has turned ugly pretty quick. So Roman, Roman basically came out here to, uh, to, to bestow some praise upon Lars, but Lars was not having it. Now they're basically talking about each other's noses and body odor and... It's kind of turned into a PG promo here, but, uh, I mean, if it leads to a fight, I'm all for it. If this leads to Roman Reigns versus Lars Sullivan, I'm definitely not going to be complaining about that match. But again, we haven't seen much of the Shield since the Rumble. Ambrose and Rollins, they, they haven't been on Raw. They, they kind of got knocked out of the tag team title picture there. Oh, Lars Sullivan saying he wants to wipe the floor with Roman's face. And Lars says, I hope you're ready because I always... Sounds like these two are going to have a match, ladies and gentlemen. And I would love to see that. Later tonight, we will see Lars Sullivan against Roman Reigns. And we'll be right back. WrestleMania! Don't miss it! And welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen. Huge blockbuster announcement we just heard. Lars Sullivan will be taking on Roman Reigns later on here tonight. And uh, that all came about as a result of Lars Sullivan eliminating Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble. Uh, Roman had called out Lars Sullivan basically to congratulate him and let him know that he's earning his respect. And Lars was not in interested in that. Basically saying he doesn't give a damn what Roman Reigns thinks about him. He doesn't care what these fans think about him. He's here to win. He's here to beat people. So tonight he gets his chance. Step in the ring against the big dog one-on-one. -on -one. And I can't imagine if Lars Sullivan does somehow win that match. You got to think that's going to jump him way up there in those rankings. I guess we'll find out. But right now we see the entrance of uh, Roderick Strong and Jason Jordan. Again, these two are still trying to find their footing here in the WWE Tag Team Division. And over the course of the last few weeks, it looks like they're starting to kind of put some things together here. Tonight they have a pretty good test in front of them in the uh, American Alpha 2.0. Shelton Benjamin and uh, I was going to say Charlie Haas. Man, Charlie Haas 2.0 basically. Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable coming out here to take on Roderick and Jason Jordan but uh, basically both of these two teams are, are just again they're they're kind of looking to, to put some wins together here gain some momentum basically get their faces on the map and and possibly work their way up for a tag team championship shot but tonight's uh, tonight's match is gonna be a tornado tag team rules where all four men will be in the ring at the same time so this could be a very exciting match looks like uh, Roderick and Jason are able to start it out strong here. Jordan with a beautiful belly-to-belly -belly on his ex-tag team partner. And another belly-to-belly -belly overhead. Roderick Strong with a huge shot off the turnbuckle to Shelton. And this, I, I really think, nothing against, I'm not taking anything away from American Alpha, but if Roderick Strong and Jason Jordan can somehow start putting together some wins, and, and the, the more they work together, the more that's eventually going to happen. They have to develop some chemistry. They have to develop. They have to know where the other one's going to be. They have to get some some tag team experience in order to pick up victories here against the other established teams. But I really think Roderick with a big leg drop there. 
I really think both of these guys have all of the tools necessary to succeed here in the WWE. But again, together, I mean, I really think they can play off each other's weaknesses, you know? I think uh, Jason Jordan, his biggest weakness has got to be his inexperience. And unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about that except get in the ring and wrestle. Uh, you got to kind of get in there and take your bumps and sometimes take your losses. But on the other side of that, his partner, Roderick Strong, he's been in the game forever. This is a 34-year-old veteran, basically, who uh, has been all over. I mean, again, we talk about... WWE is stacked with these guys that have that wrestled in other promotions. They've wrestled all over the world. Roderick Strong has been a champion basically in every organization he's ever been in. So he has a lot that he can really uh, bestow and really teach uh, Jason Jordan, which I think, again, that's going to benefit Jason Jordan. It's going to benefit Roderick Strong. Look at Shelton taking these punches. Huge double under suplex. Shelton was holding Jason Jordan up there, and Roderick was just... Punching and punching and punching him, and he was not breaking that hole. Very impressive by Shelton Benjamin. And again, not to take anything away from American Alpha, these guys, it's kind of the same story. Roderick Strong hit the uh, end of heartache there on Shelton. Oh, he was able to kick out. But again, you got the inexperienced Chad Gable down there, who's athletically gifted as all hell, paired up with the veteran... Shelton Benjamin, again, this is a guy that's been around 13, 14 years. He's held numerous championships here in WWE as well as other organizations. And I really think this is another another team that the rookie can learn from the vet. And once they do, once they start putting things together, uh, both of these teams really mirror each other in my eyes. So tonight's, tonight's match is, is actually going to be very telling as far as... Uh, momentum here. Jason Jordan with a heck of a dragon screw on Chad Gable there. Roderick picks up Benjamin again. Oh! Big side slam. Side slam move there. Jason Jordan's got Chad Gable on the ropes. Roderick Strong setting him up. Setting up Benjamin for the end of heartache. Another one. And there's no way Benjamin's going to kick out of that. That's his second one tonight. Jason Jordan with a spear and an overhead to Chad Gable. That's what I'm talking about. And there you go. The Alpha Millennia as a... Uh, looks like they came up with a team name finally. It took them a few weeks, but... The next generation right here. Roger Strong and Jason Jordan. The Alpha Millennia. Pick up a, a good win tonight, like I said. And, and the more wins they can string together, the more they're going to be noticed around here. Which, which could eventually lead to a tag team championship. Beautiful, beautiful replay of that belly-to-belly. -belly. Roderick Strong hit that end of heartache. And, and these two, I got to say, put your shades on, boys, because I do believe the future looks bright. Alpha Millennia on their way to stardom, I believe, here in the WWE. But we'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, we cut back scene now. We see Cesaro. Looks like he's approaching Sheamus. Cesaro is asking him what that meeting with Jericho was about. He's supposed to let him know what his next move's going to be here. And looks like Cesaro says he's ready for their rematch, but that's odd. Sheamus just refused the handshake and walked away. Looks like there may be some trouble in paradise there for the bar. I'm not sure. We haven't heard any news on uh, on a rematch tonight, so maybe I don't know. I'm stumped right now, but it didn't didn't look like they were on the same page there. I don't know. Sheamus, we opened the show with Sheamus in his uh, backstage meeting there with Chris Jericho. It was real quick, and it uh, looks like there was a handshake there between Jericho and Sheamus. And now Cesaro approaching Sheamus, basically asking what's going on there. I guess whatever... Whatever Sheamus had in mind with Jericho, he, he didn't fill Cesaro in on the details, and that's a big no-no in a tag team, that's for sure. You both have to know what's going on. You both have to agree on your next step. And it looks like uh, Cesaro went back there, basically saying he's ready for their rematch and ready to get those titles back. And Sheamus kind of just looked down and walked by without, without reciprocating the handshake. 
so that's uh we'll have to keep an eye on that I, I I really I can't even speculate as to what's going on there but right now I mean back to business here we got Nikki Bella taking on Ruby Riot in, in another first round match for that raw number one contender to the women's championship Earlier tonight, we did see Carmella beat uh, Becky Lynch in pretty convincing fashion. But again, keep in mind how Carmella started that match, uh, attacking Becky before the bell with a sledgehammer. Not sure anybody could really come back from that, but it does seem that Carmella has Becky Lynch's number. That's two wins over in the last month. These two ladies have had quite the history in the last few weeks as well. Ruby Riot made her Raw debut a few months ago literally by attacking Nikki Bella while Nikki Bella was backstage doing a photo shoot for the uh, the online website WWE.com and uh, Ruby Riot basically came into WWE came into Monday Night Raw wanting to make a point here she's not she's obviously not just another diva and and she believes that uh, the Bellas are the last of that diva revolution and she came in here looking to make that completely extinct but Again, Nikki Bella, former women's champion in her own right. We know we know her story. We know her accolades, and she is to be taken seriously. Oh, huge elbow drop off the top. Ruby Riot. This this has been a pretty good rivalry. It's been back and forth. Ruby Riot did have to enlist the aid of her friend uh, AJ Lee, so there's some some good that's come out of this, really. Of course, Nikki. Uh, not really known for for doing things on her own it's always been her and Brie and that's how they find success and that's fine you know you got to get what you can whenever you can how you can but Ruby Riot with the numbers game there she just couldn't keep up with the Bella attack and she had to call in her friend AJ Lee and I'm sure that took a lot of convincing as we all know AJ Lee's story and she was able to talk her back into coming back here to WWE and not only that but AJ signed a new contract, and she's been entered into the uh, number one contenders match. Big time jump from Nikki Bella there. She just pulled Ruby Riot off the apron and splashed her on the outside. Now she's got her up and slams her into that ring. And do not take Nikki Bella lightly. This is a woman that knows how to get things done in and outside of that ring. That's for sure. Very successful, and, and there's a reason for it. She knows how to hurt you in the ring. She knows how to hurt you outside of the ring. Oh, just tosses Ruby on the apron. Ruby's uh, feeling the pain right now, grabbing those ribs. I can't, I can't blame her. Huge forearm there. And again, Nikki Bella, if she wins this match, she will advance in the Women's Championship Tournament to round two. I believe she would. She has the chance to take on e the winner of the AJ Lee Mickey James match. So either way, that that really sets up to be uh, a fun match for the next round. Big back body drop there, but Ruby Riot. If she has anything to say about it, Nikki's not going to be the one advancing. That sets up another inter in interesting scenario. If uh, Ruby Riot's able to win this match tonight against Nikki, and AJ beats Mickey, then we would have Ruby Riot against AJ Lee. And again, who wouldn't want to see that match? Oh, huge face buster bulldog there. Bulldog face buster, I guess I should say. Nikki with a stomp to the back of the head. Choking her out between those thighs. Big elbow drop to the top of the head. My God. And Nikki Bella's got a mean streak. Again, make no mistake about it. This is a dangerous woman. She takes a lot of heat, but again, she knows how to handle herself in the ring. I think she's made huge improvements over the years. Her results speak for themselves. She's got Ruby up now. And the Rack Attack 2.0. And that could be it. One. Two. Three, Nikki Bella has beaten Ruby Riot here tonight. And she advances in the Raw number one contender championship tournament for the women's title. Impressive showing here by Nikki. You got to think that's 
probably not the end of the rivalry for these two. I can't imagine that uh, Ruby would be content with the rivalry ending there with a loss. But again, Nikki's going to move on. She's going to face the winner of either AJ, AJ Lee or Mickey James. Congratulations to Nikki Bella. Very impressive victory here tonight. Could it be Nikki Bella taking on Alexa Bliss for that Raw Women's Championship? I would not be surprised, that's for sure. Nikki Bella knows how to get it done. I don't know what she's doing right now. Looks like she's reaching under the ring. She's got a chair. Oh my god! What? Nikki Bella just hit the referee. She just... What is she doing? She's crazy. And again, with these two, the last few weeks, I I guess this may be retaliation for everything that... Uh, well, it's probably not even that. It's more... Oh, Nikki Bella just showing her dominance. Showing that she is still number one. She is still the queen bee of that women's division. Ruby Riot comes in here like everybody else, running her mouth, trying to knock Nikki off, but Nikki Bella still has control of this division on Raw. Oh my God. She's got her up again. Nikki's got her in the rack attack, right in your living room. Boom! Nikki Bella with the rack attack. And this is a dangerous woman, folks. You could be looking at the number one contender to the Raw Women's Championship. And let's take an updated look at the bracket here. Nikki Bella moves on to the second round. Again, she will be facing either AJ Lee or Mickey James. And we'll find that out next week. But right now, up next, ladies and gentlemen, we will have Roman Reigns taking on Lars Sullivan for the first time ever. Don't miss it. We'll be right back. And we welcome you back to Monday Night Raw live as we welcome the uh, introduction of the Gentleman's Club, Aiden English, Jack Gallagher, and Lars Sullivan. And uh, these guys, these guys have been quite impressive since uh, joining forces a few months ago. They've been able to stir up, make a little uh, noise in the tag team division. Especially with the addition of Lars Sullivan. Bringing, bringing in a monster like that's really added uh, credibility to this group. Not, not that Aiden English and Jack Gallagher don't know how to handle themselves in the ring. Obviously they do, but again, having that security policy on the outside there, Lars Sullivan, really boosts your confidence, that's for sure. <laughs> but tonight they're going to need it. They're going to be taking on, well, Lars Sullivan himself is going to be taking on Roman Reigns and the Shield in a one-on-one -on -one match. This is the first time that these two have ever met in a ring anywhere. So this ought to be an interesting confrontation, but this this all started as a result of the Royal Rumble. Uh, Lars Sullivan again with an impressive uh, Royal Rumble debut. His first Royal Rumble that he's ever been in. And he was able to pick up three eliminations. But it's not just three eliminations, it's who the eliminations were. I mean, he brought in Kevin Owens came out there, and he wasn't even in there for a minute, and Lars threw him over the top rope. Lars was able to throw out Roman Reigns, and also later on in the match, he threw out Bobby Roode. Very, three very, very legitimate top contenders here in the WWE. And Lars Sullivan killed all three of their chances of headline in WrestleMania. So tonight, Roman Reigns actually called out Lars Sullivan, stating that he's uh, he's kind of a fan. He's he's earned some respect, and you know, Reigns is, is of all the up and comers. Lars is the one that Reigns caught his eye, really. But uh, Lars wasn't having it. He wasn't hearing any of that. He, again, he's got that mean streak. He's not here to impress people. He's not here for your, you know, liking or your condonement. He doesn't care. He just wants to get in there and hurt people. This is definitely a man that can hurt people, that's for sure. He's got Roman Reigns down already. Oh, he's got him in a choke slam. Roman can't really get out. He's struggling to get out. A oh, huge shot to the gut there. And that's Roman Reigns, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget, I mean, Lars Sullivan's making him look like a small child. Just picks him up and tosses him across the ring. This guy is a formidable foe. 
Nike, sharp or stabbing. Or a huge flying clothesline in the back of Roman's head. But Roman, again, he's the big dog. He's going to be fighting back. It's going to take a lot more than that to put him down. Lars with a great counter there. Bounces Reigns' face off the turnbuckle. Aiden English is going wild out there. He knows what kind of monster he has in that ring. The big right hand to the jaw of Roman Reigns. And Roman looks like he's kind of struck here. He's a little shook. Looks like trouble here, Byron. And again, you can't really... I mean, Lars Sullivan, he hasn't been around a long time, so... Big snake eyes of the corner. You got to wonder if there's there's really any homework to be done on him. How much could Reigns really prepare for this match? Huge boot. Big boot to the face. Roman Reigns is looking like he's in trouble here tonight. Lars Solomon just teeing off on that nose. Roman is in some pain. And this guy, like I said, he, with everything that he does, there's such force behind his, his moves and his suplexes and his punches and kicks. This guy is a mountain of muscle, and he can hurt you. Oh, huge jaw jack right there. Roman was able to take it, though. And he was caught up in that side slam. Lars is really delivering a lot of punishment to the big dog here. Going for the cover. It's a little early. Reigns is able to kick out a one, but so far so good for the gentlemen's club. If, if they can manage to pick up this win over Roman Reigns tonight, my goodness, like I said earlier, you got to re really think that's going to put them up there in some contention for some titles, whether it be tag team or intercontinental or what. But Roman able to schoolboy him up. Oh, look at the power. Oh, we got power on both sides of the ring here. Don't forget that, folks. A lot of talk about Lars Sullivan, but Roman Reigns is, is still one of the strongest, toughest guys on this roster. That's for sure. But Lars Sullivan looks like he's able to counter everything Roman throws at him. Big backbreaker slam there. Lars goes for the cover. One, two, and Roman's able to kick out, but... Not convincingly, he's he's looking like he's still down. Roman's still feeling it, man. And I, I can't really blame him. Like I said, this guy's got to be close to 300 pounds, and he's all muscle. He's something like that. He just routinely slammed Reigns' face into the turnbuckle and busted him open. Now he's got him up on the top rope. What is this? This could be dangerous. Everybody better move on the outside. Oh, my God! Lars Sullivan, holy crap! Roman Reigns just bounced two feet in the air. Lars Sullivan just suplexed Roman Reigns off the top to the outside. And Reigns is just now starting to show signs of movement. Rollins and Ambrose got to be worried there. Lars has focused his attention on them. You got to keep your head in the game there, Lars. You got to keep your eyes on Roman, that's for sure. Able to catch him in that uh, running STO as he comes back in the ring. And this is quite an impressive showing from Lars Sullivan, I got to say. Roman Reigns is always the, uh, the dangerous competitor, though. Look for, I mean, if I was Lars, I'd be looking for a Superman punch out of nowhere right about now. We all know that. If Reigns can hit that Superman punch and follow it up with a spear, he is not out of this one yet, that's for sure. But he is also not completely in it either. Lars is throwing him around here like a dog plays with a chew toy. Reigns fighting back, kicks and punches in the corner, and he's getting fired up. Here we go. Big dog's on fire now. Big back elbow to Lars. Follows it up with a clothesline. And another clothesline, but he missed. Lars was able to counter. Lars Sullivan is fighting off the advances of Roman Reigns here. Huge clothesline. Reigns. This could be an enormous upset if Lars Sullivan wins this match. Reigns is tossed to the outside in dangerous territory there with Gallagher and English lurking. Lars follows it up outside. Doesn't look like Ambrose and Rollins are in too much of a hurry to uh, to help out here. They don't want to cause a disqualification, that's for sure. Lars has Roman under control. He just 
Oh, he just power bombed him on the barricade. Roman Reigns, if anything, he's taking a beating here tonight. If he was impressed with Lars before, man, he's got to be a fan of him now. Oh, another big shot to the gut of Reigns. Ambrose is kind of snaking his way over there. But again, he doesn't, I can't blame him. Doesn't look like he's in too much of a hurry to really interject. Oh, what a huge move. Reigns just clotheslined Lars up against the apron, threw him into the steps. The referee's in an eight count. What a match. Roman rolls back out to break the count, reset it. We're back at a one. That was close. Lars was in trouble getting counted out there, but now it's Roman who's Looks back like on the defensive as he was just sent into those steps. Lars sure throws him into the barricade. Oh, he just freight trained Dean Ambrose. Oh, my God. Gives Roman an opportunity to get a kick in there, but Lars is just, he's got an answer for everything here tonight. Picks Roman up in a military press on the outside. Slams him down. Face first on the outside. He just sto Dean Ambrose. Seth Rollins is keeping his distance. And I got to say, that's probably the smartest person out there right now. Lars with the freak accident on the outside. The Reigns were at a nine count. Lars gets back in. Lars Sullivan. What? What in the hell did I just see? Lars Sullivan just picked up a count-out victory over Roman Reigns. He hit the freak accident on Reigns on the outside. There you see it. The referee at a nine count. Lars slips back in. There's the ten. The Gentleman's Club with a huge boost here tonight. Lars Sullivan picks up a victory over Roman Reigns in shocking fashion. Wow. The shield is stunned. Dean Ambrose is just sitting there with his jaw hanging open. Unbelievable showing by Lars Sullivan here tonight. Wow. You got to wonder if we're going to see these two in the ring again. I would love to see that. Wait a minute. What? Ladies and gentlemen, we just got word. We just received some backstage security footage. Cesaro. Looks like Cesaro was... Walking in the general manager Chris Jericho's office. We'll have to see what that's about. Be sure to join us for part two. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen.